Major funding for this program is provided by the Winthrop Rockefeller Foundation. Yahweh, and welcome to Springdale, Arkansas. Population 62,000 and growing. My name is Carmen Chongong. I've lived here for seven years, but Springdale is not my home. I was born in the Marshall Islands, the oldest of six kids. This is my mother and me playing in the ocean on Major Atoll. The Marshall Islands consist of more than a thousand small islands and atolls scattered across 750,000 square miles in the Pacific Ocean. It's on the other side of the world from Springdale, Arkansas and the street where I live today. <laughs> My children were born in the United States and Springdale is all they know. But I tell them stories about the Marshall Islands. One of their favorites is about my first birthday party when one of my grandfathers made a canoe for me with my name painted on it. I tell them my canoe carried me a long way from home to a new island in Arkansas. Fortunately, I don't have to go very far in Springdale to get a taste of the islands. On any Saturday night, there will probably be a KMM, a traditional Marsley celebration of a child's first birthday. Everybody comes, including relatives who fly in from the Marshall Islands. And they don't bring suitcases, they bring coolers filled with fish, breadfruit, pandanus, and coconut meat. Island foods that we miss so much. They also don't bring any travel visas. Thanks to an agreement with the United States, anyone from the Marshall Islands may come here to visit and stay as long as they want. The agreement is called the Compact of Free Association. It's the result of a long and complicated relationship between the Marshall Islands and the United States government. Basically, it's what we get in return for allowing our islands to be used by the United States for testing nuclear weapons. We are a sovereign nation with a U.S. zip code. If you have a passport from the Marshall Islands, you can take a job in the United States without a work permit. That's one reason so many of us are here. There are plenty of good jobs in Springdale. It's estimated that one-tenth of the entire population of the Marshall Islands is living in Northwest Arkansas. That's more than 6,000 people who have come here in the last 10 years. A birthday game is a chance for us to come together, have some fun, and remember the islands. Every person here has their own reasons for leaving home. I am here for my children. We lost our first child at birth in the Marshall Islands. The infant mortality rate there is five times higher than the United States. When I became pregnant with Josiana, we decided to leave the island so she could be born in a more fully equipped hospital. 
That's her nickname. Selena Rene. Selena Rene. Say hello to Miss Selinda Milne, the fourth child of Nemur Timna and John Milne. She just arrived in Springdale about 30 minutes ago. Selinda is one of more than 150 Marshall children born in Northwest Arkansas this year. Her father hasn't met her yet. John Milne is just starting his shift in the freezer at the Tyson Foods Cornish Hen plant in Springdale. John loads boxes of frozen Cornish hens onto pallets for shipping. It's hard work, but the pay and the benefits are good, especially for a job that doesn't require a high school degree or the ability to speak English. Of the 200 employees working here tonight, 70% are Marshallese. Elena Milne is proud of her new granddaughter, but she has to leave because she also works the night shift at Tyson Foods. Is it a boy or a girl? It's a baby. Meanwhile, the grandfather, Simon Milne, is at home, minding the rest of the kids. Elena and Simon never dreamed they would be living and working this far from home. Lured by their children who left the islands and landed in Springdale. So they have been uh, calling us on the phone, hey, you gotta come here, here is much better than there, you know. So I said, no, cannot go over there because I got to bow them and go fishing and I won't fish over there. They say, oh, we got a lot of fish here. I say, I don't want to eat. I just want to go fishing. But deep sea fishing can be dangerous in the Marshall Islands. And on July 20th, 2000, Simon's boat sinks five miles from land. Oh, man. I say, well, that's it. That's time for me. I, you know, kind of put my head under the water and pray. I say, okay, if this is the time for me, I don't want a shark to come and bite me little by little. I want it right away. Or if you want me to uh, finish my work and work for you in this life, it's up to you. After three hours of trying to swim to shore, another boat spot Simon and pulls him from the ocean. So my wife told me, hey, you know what? I've been praying every time. And she said, good, the boat is gone. Let's, let's go to the United States now. Let's go visit our uh, children. So we came here on just before they, they hit the tower in New York. They closed all the airport, so we cannot go back. So we'd stay for a while and, well, I think she fell in love with this place. <laughs> she said, go back, quit the job and come back. We got to stay here. Thank you. Well, anything exciting going on? Quiet. Good. Really quiet. Today, Simon works as a security guard at the Jones Center for Families in Springdale, a nonprofit community center built by Harvey and Bernice Jones with money they made from their trucking business. They envision a place where community groups could hold meetings and events and families could come for recreation, all at no charge. The Jones Center is an important place for the Marshallese community in Springdale, especially the kids. And Simon Milne plays an important role at the Jones Center. I used to took my grandchildren to the Jones Center and I was surprised when I went over there and saw all those Marshallese boys and girls, PA, they have no respect for elders and people around them. And they say they are looking for in security at the Jones Center. I said, what? Man, I was thinking about all those Marshallese kids. I said, I'm going to apply for that job. 
So when we were interviewed, they asked me the reason why I got a job and why I want to take that. And when I told, told them, everybody is welcome as long as they behave like ladies and gentlemen. If you cannot behave, get out of here. Hey, young man, do not run. Just walk, please. I say, you got it. This is Carmen. My office is just a few blocks from the Jones Center. Uh, with the Marshallese community? Yes. <laughs> My job is to help Marshallese immigrants uh, adapt to their new home in yes. Springdale. Um, but there is no manual on how to deal with many of the problems brought to me. In the spring of 2005, a young Marshallese couple takes some family photographs to Walmart for processing. A few days later, the Springdale police come to their home, take custody of their four children, and arrest them for sexually abusing their four-year-old son. It seems the father was playfully teasing his son by pulling his pants down while he was sleeping. The mother took some pictures because it was funny. I'm here to help them explain to the judge the photographs were never meant to be sexual. It's dismissed out of court, mm -hmm. but we still might work with them out of court. That returns custody to them. So they officially can. give it to no, them. They can just give it. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Everyone in the Marshallese community knows the couple is innocent, and this would never have happened back home. But we must always remember, this is not the Marshall Islands. I love my kids more than I love my life. Thank God for everything. And how many people live there? Part of my job is to help people from Springdale understand these new immigrants to their community. Although we have been coming here for over 10 years, we tend to keep a low profile and stay close together. Hi Michael, this is Jackie. Can you talk with me? I want to talk with you one more time about the Ozark Islanders and their nuclear history. I first noticed the Marshallese when I was out shopping in Springdale. I went to a grocery store and I noticed a family of islanders walking really close together down the aisle looking at the products. And I noticed it was the dead of winter. They had on long flower dresses, the women did, and sandals. I looked at their feet and they had sandals on their feet. I thought, how odd. What are these? Well, who are these people and what are they doing here? And that's when I contacted the cultural liaison at the Multicultural Center, Carmen Chungam. She was the woman who educated me about the atomic testing that took place on the islands. And she took me into a back room with a portfolio of photographs of um, the atomic testing. And I, I will never forget sitting in that little room and looking at these pictures. Jackie did not know that from 1946 to 1958, the United States government tested 67 atomic and thermonuclear weapons in the Marshall Islands. The largest bomb was called the Bravo Shot. It was dropped on Bikini Atoll in 1954 and was equal to over a thousand Hiroshima-sized bombs. Radioactive fallout from Bravo was carried by winds to neighboring islands. The only thing I could think about was what happened to the people. The Marshallese community held a remembrance, as they do here every year, about the atomic bombing. 
We need to let him know. And others. Vice Admiral Blandy tells the committee <laughs> the site of the test will be the Kini Atoll and the Marshall Group. I was sitting in this auditorium surrounded by islanders who were watching a documentary about the atomic testing back in their homeland. Many of them had never seen this film before. And it was utterly quiet in there. And later on that day, they started to see fallout coming down on the islands. And these people didn't know. They didn't know that there was a bomb that was going to be dropped. Stage. You're from Bikini Atoll? Yeah. Yes, sir. Um, can I ask you a question about that? Okay. Oh, good. I felt this story was vastly underreported. In all of my encounters with the islanders, I never noted any anger. Everywhere around the world, things happen like this. So there's no explain, explanation for us why it happened, but it happened over there. The main, the only main important is that we have to stick together and live. Lumen Benjamin's family's from Bikini Atoll, and he, he never grew up there. He, he was displaced. When they have done with all the testing and everything over there, uh, they told the people that it was safe, safe for them to go back again. So when they went back to their home island, they starting to have these illnesses and sicknesses. Right now, I have a lot of aunties and uh, and also uncles. They died. They they had these sicknesses with them until they it's no longer they, their body cannot fight it anymore. They, I got two lot two this year. They all, they passed away. My sister also passed away last year of cancer and I think people from Bikini they have these cancers in their body some of them they they haven't been to the doctor they're scared to go to the doctor you have an appointment? Yeah. Yeah. over here there's a lot of them that really need medical attention but they don't know where to go and a lot of them don't know how to speak English or even fill out paperwork. She's already done. She's oh, okay. Yeah, she's doing That's the reason okay. I really like it here. Okay. It's because I feel like I'm doing something for my people. Raylan Kaiser's ability to speak English and Marshallese makes her a valuable employee of the community clinic at St. Francis House in Springdale. We serve the un and underinsured in Northwest Arkansas, so we see about 50% Hispanics. Um, we have a fair Marshallese population in its building, but I'd say it's no more than 5 or 10% at this point. How are you doing today? The Marshallese patients I see here in the clinic, they have lots and lots of diabetes, probably you know, three or four times more diabetes than um, in the average American population. Do you understand that he wants you to have some laser surgery on your eyes? <coughs> okay, so there is, there is quite a bit of diabetic changes in your eyes. Uh, there's uh, concern, I think, amongst most of the practitioners that care for Marshallese about their immune system. You know, I haven't 
noticed more of them coming in with colds or sore throats or anything like that, but it seems like when they do get an infection, um, it tends to be more severe. Uh, certainly there's the concern whether that could be related to their radiation exposure from the nuclear testing. That does definitely come to mind when you have somebody with you know, horrible infectious problems and it's being difficult to uh, get them better. You know, I don't know that we know the exact explanation, but you know, you certainly have to wonder. It's mostly that we're all sick from that. I believe that all the islands got affected, even though they said only a few of the islands. It's all the islands, because, I mean, not, I feel that all, some of the people from the other islands that they said it was an effect, you know, they're getting the same sickness those people are getting. And some of them don't even know that they're sick, because, you know, we don't go to the doctors all the time. We don't go for a checkup just to check if you're, you know, there's something wrong with you. Until there is, then that's when you realize, oh, you are sick. Any questions? No, no, thank you. <laughs> One of the most challenging parts of my job is working with the Marsley's teenagers living in Springdale. These are the kids who began their education in the Marshall Islands and now are finishing it in Arkansas. The transition can be hard. Most of them have come from schools lacking qualified teachers. The pace is quicker here, and the language is English only. The educational opportunities offered in a place like Springdale High School are exciting, but also intimidating. Of the 2,660 high school students here, 111 are Marshallese. At noon, you can find many of them eating together on an island in the crowded lunchroom. This campus, it's so big comparing to the school at the Marshall Islands. All the Marshallese students, they would just hang around like together. When we hang out together, we talk about the Marshall Islands. Hey baby, my, mom. my name is Makika Malakai. I'm 17 years old and I first came here in the United States in uh, 1997. I didn't really know English that well. It was very hard. I didn't talk that much in school, or the only thing that I would do is smile. <laughs> Come on, Robin, we gotta go. Ready? Uh, yeah. And five, four, three, two, one. Well, we have an interesting show for you guys today. We have news for uh, both of you. I'm Joe Ray, and I teach at Springville High School. I've been here 11 years. I've been teaching TV here about eight years. What's your tripod number? You know, 11 years ago, I guess we were 98% white. Now we're at least 50-50 white and minority. You want to point it right at their mouth. Right. I think the Marshallese students are more bold than they were several years ago. The first year I was here, I, had, uh, I was teaching oral communication, and I had a Marshallese girl who was so shy that she couldn't hardly keep her head off her desk. <laughs> but they're not that shy anymore. The first time I, I noticed these kids in my introductory class, they were having trouble. Most of them had a lot of difficulty with the language, and they could not understand what I was trying to teach. And so I, I, went, I approached them and I said, I'm trying to pick out some kids who are really interested in television to do a show on diversity issues. And uh, so I, I sort of pulled them out of the intro class and we formed this diverse, and we named it Diverse City, which is the class that's mostly Hispanic and Marshallese. I think it forces them to expand their comfort zone and to go out and stick a microphone in someone's face and ask questions, you know. So they've learned to do things that probably they never thought they would be doing. What are you planning to do after graduation? Go to college. For how many years? Four. <laughs> Mama can college, and why come
I'm doing a senior farewell project. I interview every senior and get pictures of them. And I ask them if they're going to go back to Marshall Islands, and they say that they don't know, but they said that they want to go back, but they just don't have the money to go. But they really want to go. On my laptop over here, I have a screensaver that's different island shots of, I mean, it was just on the computer. And they'll just stand there and look at that. Where did you get that, Miss Ray? That's just like it. That's got to be our island, you know. Oh, they, they miss it so bad, so much, Abner especially. I miss the island, but that's it. This place, Arkansas, it's good, but it's like country. It's fun, on the lake and stuff. But I miss the Marshall Island more, because it's the real ocean, salt ocean. The reason why he misses the Marshall Islands is because his parents are there. There are a lot of friends that I have, and they're here, and their families, their parents especially, they're back at the Marshall Islands. And the reason why they're here is for education, better education. Sometimes I wish that Marshall Islands would have been here, you know, at the same time, Springdale too, just one hour drive. <laughs> but I don't know, just, I wanna go back, but I wanna stay. I'm used to it now, you know, I lived here longer than Marshall Islands. They may think they wanna go, but they may find out this is home. One, two, three. Well, they're pioneers, you know. They're just like the old pioneers in the old days that came in the covered wagons and always wanted to wish they could go home, but just never were able to go home. These kids are that way, you know. They, they're pioneers, and who knows what will happen to them. No elementary school in Springdale has a personality just like Parson Hills. 90% of our students live within walking distance of the campus. And every year we have right around 700 students. Our school is unique in that if you looked at a pie chart of our demographics, we have almost three equal slices of children with um, Caucasian backgrounds, Hispanic backgrounds, and Pacific Island backgrounds. So it gives us a really great balance of cultures. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. I do believe that they think about their nationality and that they think about their identity because they enjoy sharing their culture with others. The students here are probably some of the few people in the world that could pick out the Marshall Island flag. Every boy needs to put on a skirt. Hey, Juwan, come on. We're going to do both girls' dances first. We're going to do a way. Okay, hang your lay the right way, like Dandy is. No cool styling things, just around your neck. Okay, I'll be right back to get you. We have so many Marshallese students, and I could see in them a real need to stay tied to some of the things in their culture um, that they had great fond memories of. It's not so easy to replicate playing on the beach in Arkansas, but we can definitely replicate the music and the dance. students that come that don't speak any English at all have friends who can help 
interpret for them in class to have basic understanding. I see that our students pick up the language quickly. My guess is if they didn't have so much support in their home language, they would be able to pick it up even more quickly. Did you see the lot on the giraffe? They'll speak Marshallese, they'll turn to someone else, speak English, turn right back and speak Marshallese. Because we always hold the fingers of the chest. They're free to speak whatever language they'd like to at school, but they have to know teachers probably not going to understand them unless it's English. Why? Why would the plants that are on the forest floor have to grow well in the shade? When you ask a question, they process it in their native language. So they're taking it from English back to their native language, and then they answer it in their native language, and then processing that back to English so that what they give to you is in the language that I know. Scott knows. Because there, it always rains and there's sunlight. It always rains and there is sunlight? So you really have to give them a long time to be able to answer a question. Scott, just think about it. Don't get nervous, just think about it. You don't think so? I'm Andy Acuff. I teach fourth grade at Parson Hills, and this is my sixth year here. In my classroom, I have 28 students, um, 14 girls, 14 boys. Out of my classroom, eight are Marshallese. Some of them have been here since day one, so they don't know any different. I have a few who, you know, know their family comes from the Marshall Islands and they speak Marshallese but they've never been there so this has pretty much been their world and then I have some who plan to go back to the Marshall Islands you know who are living with aunts and uncles or grandparents and who want to go back there but then they don't act like it's hard for them and I don't know if that's just the way they act but I have many 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 almost probably the majority of my students live with aunts uncles grandparents or sometimes they're not even related they're you know uh, brother-in-law's family or you know some other type of family and they call each other mom dad brothers sisters and you don't really know that they're not you know real mom dad and brothers so trying to find their family tree is sometimes hard because they're all it's like one big family when you have conversations with the parents um, they are very focused in that they came here for their child to get a good education and I'm so glad that you are here. And I'm they will come and support their child. They will come and watch their child, especially for academic things like graduations. Brandon wants to be a doctor when he grows up. They're very, very proud of their children learning. Mike says he wants to be like his dad. Sometimes there are things um, maybe that they don't understand or that they grew up or began raising their children um, differently from, from what's probably most appropriate in a place like Springdale. Perhaps they've had the opportunity to live in a more relaxed lifestyle that um, I think we have a few more things to worry about than maybe they did. The Jaguar is the... Every school day, Anita Iban relives her own struggle to learn English as a second language. She teaches Romina reading at Parson Hills because she remembers how hard it was when she first came to the United States as a teenager. Okay, everybody, read that page. The, the fish and red belly. Her students may not know it, but their teacher comes from a royal family. Back in the Marshall Islands, Anita's father is an boy, the king of an island. And I find myself in that same position when I'm over here. They look at me as a role model or someone that they know that they can come to, and I might have the answer for them. Okay, we're going to stop right here. I feel like this is my home away from home because, you know, I see my people here. Everywhere I go, whether it's the grocery store, the bank, the post office, school, I have to deal with over 100 Marshallese students here. And I know they feel the same way too. Just like our Marshallese students, Anita left home for a better education. But after college, her plan was always to return to the islands. That's what they all say. Oh, well, we're just going to work a little and then go back home. And, you know, I have to laugh at that because my husband and I said the same thing, what, 20, 20-some 20 years ago. 
that's what we're going to do, but here we are still. My husband felt that he felt the calling to be more involved with the church and, and try to reach the Marshallese that are here, and now that's what he's doing. I call my uh, my home anywhere he wants me to go. Right now it's Springdale, Arkansas. We've been here almost eight years doing the will of God and the work of God here in North Virginia. The congregation is uh, mostly Marsley's people coming from all over the islands. <laughs> Well, in the church, we teach how can we adjust to the life here in the States. You know, like people coming here and live on their own. And it's like a freedom, you know, to whatever you want to do. And sometimes you get in trouble with the law. And back there, you wouldn't do that kind of stuff. What do you think you're away from home and you look around you and you see people do that and say, hey, maybe I can do that too. to be somebody else trying to imitate to be somebody be who you are and do what you what do you know and don't try to be some somebody else that you are not and show that we are a people who are responsible can contribute to the community just like anybody else There are at least 13 Marshallese churches in Northwest Arkansas holding services in storefronts and abandoned sanctuaries. They are an important link in our community. It's like the avenue to the people runs through the churches and they are packed every Sunday. I hope they all remember to say a prayer for me as I make the final plans for the year's biggest Marshallese celebration. Constitution Day, the birthday of our nation. Oh, because, you know, I have to go to the airport to, to get our senator. Our Marshallese Independence Day is actually the 1st of May, but in the United States, we celebrate on Memorial Day weekend, so people have time to travel. Our government always sends representatives. Last year, the president came to Arkansas, and this year, the Minister of Public Works, Madeline Zagreas, arrives with his family, greeted by people from Namarik, his home island. <laughs> of course, I'm a little nervous. So much planning and work has gone into this event. Even my kids are helping out. We basically take over the Jones Center for the weekend, and Marshall's teams from as far away as Arizona and Oregon come together for competitions in basketball, volleyball, and softball. This year's theme is Guayapino take a love again wine for yelling no really. Or do not take the canoe for granted. It is your source of life. I feel that the canoe that we're talking about in this theme is this three-day weekend. The canoe can also be our community here in Springdale. And like he said, that if only one person is pushing it, it's not going to pull. But if all of us push and chant like our old, um, our great grandfathers did, they used to chant and push a canoe, then it moved. So I advise that we all work together. We are here in Northwest Arkansas. Even though we are here, let's keep 
our heritage, our culture, pass it on to our kids. The music, the food, and the dancing takes us all back home for a while. And the competitions give us a chance to show pride in the teams representing our home islands and atolls. Some have a real local flavor, like the girls from this Tyson Foods team, decked out in Arkansas razor bag ray. Their opponents have come all the way from Majuro, the capital of the Marshall Islands. One player on the Majuro team is not only a good hitter, she's also a senator in the Marshall Islands Parliament. Abaga Anjai Medicine represents the people of Ronlap, an island deeply contaminated by the nuclear testing. The men's team from Rola bears the name Mejapto, the island they were exiled to 20 years ago. They are dispersed. They're living outside of their home at all because they don't have any home. Well, I asked them, which one of you were on the boat that left 20 years ago from Rola? A couple of them just raised their hands, so I said, okay, I need all the names of the people that moved. They know the hardship they went through. This is our sacred lands. We are no one, we are nobody without them. It is my concern people are living in bundles. Culturally, our culture is, you know, being, you know, disrupted for, because they are leaving. But they need to find a better, better life. This is the land of opportunity. Um, they find it uh, that they're accepted here. They feel at home here. If it means to survive, so be it. The relationship between the Marshals and the United States is basically a military one. The United States' interest in us is military. From the beginning to this day, it's still military. And uh, we have sacrificed a lot of health, land, because uh, of the United States' interest in military development. Tony De Broom has spent over 35 years in the Marshallese public service. He was a principal figure in the negotiations with the United States which resulted in the Compact of Free Association. His passion for the Marshallese cause is fueled by something that happened to him as a young boy growing up on the island of Ligiet. On March 1, 1954, he witnessed the Prower shot, the most powerful bomb in U.S. nuclear history. Just thinking about the Bravo shot gives me goose pimples even today. I'm 60 years old. Bravo was when I was nine. I was on the beach with my grandfather. He, he was throwing net. And we had already started uh, fishing when, uh, when the flash hit us. still hear him say, run, run, run to the house. The whole sky just turned red. I could still hear my grandfather saying, run. But then everything became red. After the initial flash, I, I could not run. The sound of Bravo was the most fearful sound I've ever heard in my life. I thought the world had ended. Today, hardly anybody 
remember that if they do, it's because they, they read it somewhere in a report. It, it is not, has no significance anymore. And, you know, if it were just an automobile accident or a boating accident where some people drowned or, or some guys lost uh, an, a limb or an eye or something, fine, it goes away. But the problems of radiation linger. They don't just disappear. We have islands that will be contaminated for the next 12,000 years. And there's, they sit right next to communities. Uh, we, have, we have problems of, 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 of uh, genetic mutation that we don't fully understand. We have numerous problems of birth anomalies that are normally not discussed in public or even reported. The effects of it are kept secret by the people who are affected. The people who per perpetrated those damages keep it secret for sake of limiting liability. And so it, 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 it never comes out. But that doesn't stop life. Life continues and we try our best to, to adjust. We are all trying to adjust to life here in Arkansas. And each one of us has a different dream for the future. Simon Milne would love to return to the simple life of the outer islands. But first, he has to convince his wife, Elena. I told her that if we go back, I want to go back and stay the, the way we used to in the outer island. That's the life I like. But she doesn't want that life. She wants the life, kind of life in the urban center. Who knows, maybe I might stay here and die here. There is a saying in our custom, that's mean, the meaning of that, doesn't matter where you die. Because you're still going to be six feet under the ground. Come to think about it right now, it's, it's like I lost part of my life. Kids, I spent most of my adulthood here in the States. And really don't know what would have been like to stay there all my life. I, I still wonder what would have have been. For most Marshallese young folks living in Springdale, the future is here in the United States. But I worry about them because after high school, only a few are going on to college. It's easier to just get a job at Tyson's, leave at home and not face the fear of leaving the familiar island of your friends and family. Some of them, like Magigo Malagai, are learning how to navigate the strange, uncharted waters of the American education system. Magigo has a scholarship to attend community college in the fall. I wish they all could go, not to lose their marshalist culture, but if you're here, it's a fast lane. Time to speed up. Those taking the first steps to college are the brave ones. It tells you when you need to start preparing for the ACT, the SAT. It, it takes courage for Nathania, Sylvia, and Magigo to be the only Marshallese girls attending a summer class on money management at the University of Arkansas. Just being here helps them begin to believe they can do it. If you are Marshallese, tell me that. Your heritage is your gift, people. It is your gift. It is your strength. And by the way, your degrees, your degrees are not about you. Your degrees are about continuing success in your family and, and keeping the, the, the heritage line going. 
You need to give back to the community. You need to be able to give back to your family. You need to be able to give just give back to your, and you can't do that without a degree. Alvies Labior and Lucia Benjamin are also on campus this summer. They are the only Marshall students in the Math and Science Upward Bond program. It's designed to give encouragement to high school students who are unsure about college. Alvies got me involved in this, so we fill out an application together and they accepted us. I just thought it, it was exciting, it was fun, because living in the dorms, I thought that was something I would want to do. It feels like I'm in college. In engineering, we're working on concretes, and we're like trying to find out a, way, a new way to test the compressive strength of concretes. In this program, it's only me and Albia, so, and the rest of them are just white and Hispanic, and I feel like I'm part of them. I'm one of them. Like, I'm an American. Yeah. I didn't really plan on going to college yet, because, I don't know, I just, but right now, I, I really want to go there. I really want to go to college. It like this program has made me realize that there's a lot of things out there that I could really do, like get to explore things. Just because I've been here and it's they're offering me chances. X I never pictured myself going back to Marshall Island. I just picture myself as. If I would become a doctor, I would stay here and work all my life. I like it out here in America. So I want everybody to do this. 3x. Albius is someone who is trying very hard to be successful here, while always remembering where he's from. He can solve most of the problems in math class, but there is one question he finds tough to answer. Where is your home? <sighs> Where is my home? That's a nice question. I could choose Marshall Island that because where I was born, and I could choose Springville because where I live now, and I go to school, and I learn new things, and I think so I will go to Springville. If life is better there, I maybe go, but like if life is going worse, I'm going to stay here. Marshall students like Albius and Lucia sometimes feel pressure from their friends to not take part in programs like Upward Bound. Some told me they, are, they don't want to waste their time on this kind of stuff like school activity, spend their summer here in the university, they just want to get a job. School first and second job. Because if you graduate from college, it will not affect only you. It will affect the government, or where you're from, your family, your friend, and they will look upon you and say, nice job. Can you come and work for us? We need you. Marshall Allen, they need teacher, doctor, who are graduate from college. They need in Marshall Allen. So that's why I want to continue my education, maybe go to college and go back there and help my country. On a cold day in February, my husband Charlie and I are at the airport to welcome another Marshallese immigrant to Northwest Arkansas. He's my cousin, Gabriel Joligia. He says it was a long flight, and he almost missed his connection in Phoenix because he couldn't read the flight schedule. He brought three pieces of luggage, one small bag of clothes, and the two big coolers filled with fish and breadfruit from the Marshall Islands. 
His plan is to get a job, probably at Tyson Foods, save some money, and buy a ticket for his girlfriend to come. He needs to get a social security number and learn enough English to pass the driving test. For now, he will live in my sister's house. Welcome to Springdale, Gabriel. Just another beautiful island. Major funding for this program is provided by the Winthrop Rockefeller Foundation.